Hello, I'm Piers Corbyn from Weather Action Long Range Weather and Climate Forecasters. And today, the 31st of May, the first decent day in London for quite some time, I'm going to give you a report of what's happened in spring, tell you about an important conference that happened in Geneva recently, and lastly talk about the latest developments in the arguments with the claims of the global warming lobby. Now, we've just had a very cold and late spring in Britain, Ireland, Europe and the USA, completely in line with our long-range forecast, which is all part of a developing mini ice age. And this has been the coldest spring since uh, around well, since 1962 or 1910, which were the two most extreme in uh, this century. And uh, to us, this means we are clearly in the mini ice age type weather which we predicted would come upon us. Um, and the global warmers, of course, have nothing to say because it is completely contrary to their theory of early warm springs, end of snow in winter and such complete nonsense, which the opposite has in fact overruled. Um, an interesting thing about the spring in detail was that the warmer parts were mostly not as warm as we thought they would be, which suggests that the mini ice age changes which the planet is now undergoing are actually happening more rapidly than uh, we and, and uh, others expected. So we've got to watch this space carefully, but it seems very likely that is, is, is true. Now, you can go on the website to look in a lot more detail of how the spring developed, but a very interesting uh, series of events happened in late May where we had what we called an R5 plus period, which was the big uh, red warnings, um, extreme events would happen around the world, we said, between the 27th and 29th of the month. And we specifically predicted extreme events, extreme thunderstorms, giant and large hail, tornadoes, and so forth. And in that period, we had reports to the effect that Europe had uh, lit up with thunderstorms like a bonfire night. And we had on the 28th of May, the middle day of our three-day period, it was reported in America that 50 million homes were under threat from severe storms over a very wide area, in line with our specific detailed predictions for the USA. Um, and that period, interestingly, was preceded by uh, us correctly highlighting the uh, high risk of um, major thunderstorms and tornadoes in the Oklahoma region, which was the same period in which the big storm, the devastating tornado happened. We didn't predict that tornado specifically, but we did highlight that as a, as a risky period as well. Also in this period, interestingly, there was a uh, major volcanic event in Chile. Um, now we have associated with our R5 weather periods, we do have QV periods. These are trial periods for increased risk of um, volcanism and earthquakes. And this in fact was one of those periods. Which we're very interested in that and we're sure it bears out our general magnetic uh, theory of how the Earth is influenced by the weather, both in its atmosphere and under the ground. Now, our successes have attracted a lot of interest from those involved in agriculture and industry. And recently I was speaking at a conference in Geneva of the Grain and Feed Trades Association, um, where uh, we warned of the uh, developing mini ice age and there was very important discussion on what this means for world agriculture, trade, commodities, energy industry, um, food supply. Um, and uh, the uh, influence of global warmers was of much diminished, I would say, um, but there was one contribution from Swiss Re, 
which is a very large reinsurance organisation and they reinsure a lot of people against uh, weather threats which they describe as being originating from the delusional idea of man-made climate change. Anyway, um, the contributor from Swiss Re presented a graph uh, which is the black version of this graph where uh, I pointed out to him, and this is a graph of CO2 levels, and he uses this increase to say there's danger. I said, sir, do you realise that the data from 1958 is chemical data and generally recognised as being valid and collected in Mauna Loa, um, but the previous data up until then is ice core data where it underestimates the amount of CO2 because that diffuses and it completely loses the CO2 spikes. And the real data, if you do proper chemical measurements, shows that twice in the last 200 years CO2 levels exceeded 0.04%. That's the thing they grandly term 400 parts per million. And therefore his claims are actually nonsense. And the conference applauded what I said, interestingly. And uh, the man from Sicily said, oh, yes, but. He said, well, there's still been weather extremes. I said, yes, there's still been weather extremes, but they're the opposite to the extremes you predicted. Your theory is pointing the world in the wrong direction. And I think that is the important thing to say. The global warmest and greenies who believe they're saving the planet, they are doing the opposite. They're not preparing us for anything except spending more money on nonsense like wind farms. Okay, this is available on our website and plenty of discussion about it. But the significant things are, of course, that these two peaks in real CO2 measurements, one of them was the last mini ice age actually, associated with a cold period and the other one in the 1940s was a warm period. So to say these things are driving Climate is nonsense, complete nonsense. And that brings me to another issue. The politicians are now beginning to realise that the game is up. And Tim Yeo, the chairman of the Climate Change Committee, who hitherto has been total card-carrying, religious, obsessive believer, in man-made effects, um, recently said, and he's the chairman of this community in Parliament, that he wasn't any more sure that climate change was caused by man, but it could be natural. Well, it's interesting. So I was asked recently on Wiltshire Radio uh, what I thought about that. I said, well, two things. One, he knows the game is up and he's got a slither. Two, he wants the Tories to win the next general election. Tim Yeo and a lot of politicians know that the public are not going to go along anymore with spending 25% surcharge on the electricity bills going to rise to 100% to pay for wind farms which kill birds and produce nothing useful in terms of electricity. They're going to say no and the Tory party is now starting to reposition itself. The political party which is first to ditch the climate change nonsense will win the next general election. Thank you.